What's going on, gardeners? It's Sunday, November 20th, and the cold weather is here to stay on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, and that means I can finally harvest my sweet potatoes. So on today's video, I'm going to show you an incredible new way that I developed to cure and store your sweet potatoes that will change your life. Say goodbye to the awful process of having to dedicate a whole room of your house for curing your sweet potatoes. After watching this video, you will never have to do that again. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. When growing sweet potatoes, the first question people ask me is how long does it take to grow a sweet potato? And the answer to that question is it depends on what type of sweet potato you're growing and how warm your climate is because sweet potatoes need a very long warm and preferably humid growing season to grow large. Now sweet potatoes are the tuber-like roots of a morning glory type plant. So that being said, the longer they grow in ground, the larger the sweet potato tubers will get. So if you want really large sweet potatoes, you have to give them enough time to grow. Now, generally speaking, most varieties of sweet potatoes will take a minimum of somewhere between four and six months in order to grow large enough so you get really nice tubers out of the deal. However, you can leave them in ground as long as your growing season will allow so you will have a cool enough environment to store them for long-term storage. Now, sweet potatoes need to be stored at about 55 degrees Fahrenheit, let's say between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit to make things easy. So for most of us, that means storing them in either a cool basement or a cool garage. Now, if you have a cool basement, once you achieve those mid 50 degree temperatures, you can then harvest your sweet potatoes and then you have an environment that's cool enough to store them for long term storage. If you live in the southeast like I do where the water table is too high and we don't have basements, we have to generally store them in our garage. So I have to wait until mid to late November until the garage is finally cool enough for storage. So I wait for my sweet potatoes to get hit by a couple of frosts or a few light freezes to leave them in the ground as long as possible so my garage can finally cool off for permanent storage. And you can do this because sweet potatoes, the vines may be killed by a frost or a light freeze, but as long as the ground doesn't freeze, it's okay to keep the sweet potatoes in the ground because the ground stays warm. So if you have a light freeze, don't fear, you can leave them in the ground a little bit longer for your garage to cool off. And that finally has happened for me. And right here, you'll see my sweet potato bed. Yesterday, this was a giant mass of vines that was overtaking this whole portion of my garden, but I cut them all off in preparation for this video. So now that they've been cut off, I'm able to more easily find where the sweet potatoes actually meet in the ground, and I can start pulling them up some to try and get some of these sweet potatoes out. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to gently pull up the vines and locate the sweet potatoes, and I'm going to wear gloves to make sure that I don't scuff the very fragile skins, because if you, if you scuff the skins, you can damage them and they won't cure and store properly. And right here are all of the sweet potatoes that I harvested from this sweet potato bed. Now last year I created a video that showed you how to start your own sweet potato slips from whole sweet potatoes and I'll make sure to link to that video above because all of these potatoes right here were started from slips that I started myself. And in that video I started three different varieties. I started Stokes Purple, Murasaki, and Okinawan. Now the Okinawans I had to buy from a grocery store and unfortunately the Okinawans didn't sprout at all. They never formed slips. So I guess they're probably treated by some kind of chemical when they're shipped from overseas. So I guess you can't use Okinawan grocery store sweet potatoes in many cases, unfortunately. However, the Stokes and the Murasakis sprouted just fine. Now, because I really wanted to grow Okinawan, I had to go and order sweet potato slips off of Etsy. They were the only place I could find them. And I usually don't like ordering things from websites like that. And the slips came late. They did root, they grew fine, but they only produced 
this small amount of potatoes right here. So that's why my overall yield is so low. I dedicated a third of the bed to these potatoes and they just never took, unfortunately. So next year I'm gonna stay ahead of the game and I saved a leftover slip that was still alive and didn't die in the frost. So I'm going to maintain this Okinawan over the winter to start slips earlier next year and hopefully I will have better results. As for the sweet potato bed itself, this is probably the last year I will be growing sweet potatoes in this bed because the roots themselves are so vigorous, they're tunneling underneath the weed barrier and they're working their way into my other beds. So I'm going to probably build a new larger bed for next year to grow my sweet potatoes in isolation so the tubers don't root themselves and invade the rest of my garden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this bed in kitchen scraps and then a few bags of compost to re-nutrify it and likely grow something new in it next year. After harvesting your sweet potatoes, I suggest you don't rub the dirt off of the sweet potatoes because the skins are very fragile when they're not cured. So if you try and rub that dirt off, you might tear the skin and then they won't store as well. So all you really need to do is just shake them off and they're fine the way they are. There's no need to remove all of that dirt prior to cooking, or you can remove the dirt after the full curing process is done and the potatoes have been toughened up a bit. Now let's discuss the curing processes. There are two curing processes for sweet potatoes. The first cure is the warm cure, which takes place at 80 to 90 degrees, ideally 85 degrees Fahrenheit, for a period of about 4 to 14 days, ideally 7 to 10 days, I find, is just fine. And the purpose of the warm curing process is two things. It helps toughen up the outer skin, which is ideal for maximum storage life, and most importantly, it dramatically increases the sweetness of the sweet potatoes. Don't skip this step if you want to have the sweetest sweet potatoes possible and you want them to store as long as possible. The second step is the cool curing process which takes place at 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, ideally 55 degrees Fahrenheit, for a period of about six to eight weeks and that completes the curing process for maximum taste and storage. After the full curing process has been completed, you can then move them to a cool dry pantry out of any direct light or you can keep them in that 50 to 60 degree cool dry area for the remainder of their storage life and they should last many months. Now the warm curing process is usually what gives people headaches and it's often skipped because the traditional way to cure sweet potatoes is to section off a room in your house and then put in some type of space heater and a humidifier and get that room up to 85 degrees with 80 to 90 percent humidity to warm cure them and that is just a huge headache it costs a lot of money it obviously uses a ton of real estate so for that reason a lot of people skip that process and they get inferior sweet potatoes as a result that's why I've developed this amazing new process that will make things so easy for you to warm cure cure your sweet potatoes. It doesn't take any space heaters, no humidifiers. You can create the perfect microclimate for warm curing them and all you need is a plastic storage bin and a seedling heat mat with a thermometer. Now to show you the incredible method that will make warm curing your sweet potatoes so much easier. And just for the record, everything that I'm using right here, it's all linked in my Amazon storefront down in the video description. So for any of these tools, you can get them there. They're all very inexpensive. So the first thing you need is a seedling heat mat, something large enough to accommodate some type of plastic container for you to cure your sweet potatoes in. I prefer to use one of these clear plastic containers. They're about $10 or so at Walmart. I like the clear because you can see condensation on the side and it helps to know that you're getting the proper results in your curing chamber, but you don't have to use a clear container. The next thing you need is one of these seedling heat mat thermostats. And this is really the key to the whole process because this allows us to hold the heat at the exact temperature that we want inside this curing chamber. And the last thing you need is some type of vessel to hold water inside, which is going to be the source of our humidity because we need high humidity for this. And this right here is a 64 ounce mason jar. They're a couple bucks a piece. You can use any kind of container. You can use a couple of pint glasses. It doesn't really matter. Just something that holds water to keep the humidity high. So what we do is we plug this, the, uh, the seedling heat mat thermostat into the wall and then we plug our seedling heat mat into the thermostat. And this seedling heat mat is the 48 inch by 20.75 inch uh, heat mat that I have linked in my Amazon storefront in case you're curious. 
Then once that is plugged in, you simply run the thermometer inside because we need to make sure that we take the temperature inside of the curing chamber and then we're going to hold set and we're going to turn the temperature up to 85 degrees and press set. And what that's going to do is uh, the thermometer is going to measure the temperature inside and any time it falls below 85 degrees, it's going to kick the seedling heat mat on and then once it reaches 85 degrees, it's going to trigger the seedling heat mat off. Then we are going to put a lid on top of it and only leave it ever so slightly vented because we don't want to create some kind of anaerobic condition. So it's ever so slightly cracked to let in a little bit of fresh air, but we need to keep it mostly sealed to hold in that humidity. And just like that, we created the perfect sweet potato curing chamber. It's going to stay at exactly 85 degrees and it's going to hold in humidity really well because of that water source in Side. And this is going to revolutionize your sweet potato curing game because you're not going to have to section off a room of your house anymore. And if you have tons of sweet potatoes because you're a big grower, you just need multiple of these setups. So if you buy several of these containers, you can cure hundreds and hundreds of pounds of sweet potatoes, no problem. So I'm going to leave this in for the required four to 14 day period. I find seven days is usually just fine. The longer you let them cure, the sweeter they can potentially get. But when you're maintaining the absolute perfect temperature, it usually doesn't take that long. It's the next day and you can see even with the lid cracked in the sweet potato curing chamber, the humidity is building up thanks to that jar of water that we put inside. And that's exactly what we want. That is the perfect warm curing environment for sweet potatoes. You can see all of the condensation building up on the top of the lid exactly as intended. And you can see the thermostat is on just about at exactly 85 degrees and the heating mat is warm to the touch. So we're going to let this go for another six days to complete the curing process. It's Saturday, December 3rd, and my sweet potatoes have been curing in this chamber for almost two weeks. And I had originally hoped to pull them after about seven days, but I've just been so busy I haven't gotten around to it. And that is the beauty about creating this perfectly temperature and humidity controlled environment. If you don't have the time because things are coming up in your life, you can let them sit in this controlled environment for up to two weeks until time allows you to go ahead and pull them. So now we're going to pull them from this humidity chamber and we're going to transfer them into a cardboard box. So now is the perfect opportunity to use an old Amazon box or any kind of shipping box if you have them lying around. We can finally make use of this trash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the humidity chamber and I'm going to start transferring the sweet potatoes to the box like so. And then after they're done and I'm finished transferring them into the box, you can then move them into a cool, dry, dark place for the cool curing process. This process will take place at approximately 55 degrees Fahrenheit, but anywhere between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit will be fine. For me, that's going to be in my garage now that it's nice and cool this time of year. But for many of you, if you have basements, that will probably be an appropriate place. They're going to sit inside this box and go through the cool dry curing process for six to eight weeks. And what this cool dry curing process is going to do is enhance their shelf life as well as toughen up their skin and further make them sweeter. After the six to eight week cool curing process is done, you can then decide whether you want to bring them inside and store them as necessary inside a room temperature pantry, or you can leave them in this cool, dry, dark place pretty much indefinitely where they will store for months. Now in the past, many of you have asked me how long does it take to cure the sweet potatoes and how will you know when they're fully cured? And the answer to that question is you have to try it and taste the sweet potato to know when the curing process is done because they will be sufficiently sweet when the process is complete. Now pro tip, when it comes to making a sweet potato, it's very important that you bake them for at least an hour at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer because the high temperatures in the oven will actually convert some of the existing starch into additional sugars. And if you cook them at a low temperature or boil them, you're just left with whatever sugar content was already in there. You won't convert existing starch into sugar. So this is a small Stokes purple sweet potato that I just baked for an hour in the oven. And look at that, that is absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to try it. But somebody over here is begging like crazy. Dale loves sweet potatoes. Hold on buddy, let me try mine first. Oh, oh that's sweet as honey. Come on buddy. Ooh, this is very good. 
This is very different than an orange sweet potato. It's a lot drier, but it's also a lot sweeter. This Stokes purple sweet potato, very, very good. So you can try a sweet potato after the seven day mark in the warm curing method and bake one for an hour. And if you're happy with it, you can stop the warm cure process right there and then bring it outside to your cold curing process. If it's not quite sweet enough for you, go another three days or go the full 14 days because the longer they warm cure, technically, the more sugars they could potentially develop. Come on, buddy. You want another one? Come on up. Oh, there he is. You can barely see his snoot there. He is loving it. And that right there is a revolutionary new method of curing and storing sweet potatoes that I developed that will literally change your life because it takes a painfully arduous process of curing sweet potatoes that used to take hours if not days to set up and could literally wall off an entire room of your house for days if not weeks and it turns it into this super simple process that takes place in this little tiny footprint of your room with no effort on your part and automates the process completely. Now I know many of you are going to ask me did I really need to transfer my sweet potatoes into a cardboard box? And the answer is no. I could have used that same plastic container and just moved it out into my garage, but I need that plastic container to root fig cuttings in within the next couple of weeks. So that's why I transferred it into a cardboard box. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like this. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video or that I used in real life in my garden in general. They are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description. So click that Amazon storefront link to see everything I used in this video in real life. And also while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. See Dale, I've been telling everybody that you're the real brains of the operation around here. You do the designs, you do all the hard work, and you look so good in that hat. And you know what? We have the same head and nose size. You're the best, buddy. Now everybody knows for sure that you're the real brains of the operation.